it going? Night Owl here. Hope everybody is having a great weekend. I just wanted to get into chapter 5 of my Share Jesus Without Fear book that we've been reading every Sunday. Um, I apologize for not up uploading any videos uh, over the weekend. Um, I was having some problems with my iPad. It keeps telling me that I have not enough space. Well, apparently I fixed it. I deleted a few apps that I wasn't using, a few things that my kids weren't using and stuff like that. So hopefully this is better now and um, stuff like that. So anyways, I just want to get into this, uh, but I want to start by saying, you know, I hope that everybody um, knows that you don't have to stay and watch. I would really be happy if you did stay and watch. Uh, this subject isn't for everybody and I understand that, uh, but this is my belief and I respect anyone who has different beliefs. I love everybody the same. Uh, red, white, blue, green. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what Christ, what faith you are, Christian or not, I love everyone the same. And you're welcome to stay and listen. And I hope you do. And, you know, give it a like. Hit the red support button and the little bell next to it so you never miss another video that I make. So let's get into this book. We are on chapter five, which is the power of scripture. And um, like I said, this is the part where this kind of helps you with a few scriptures that you can relate to and different ways to address things. So let's get right into it. So far, you've learned you cannot fail when you are obedient to share your faith. You've also learned how to ask questions as conversation starters. The answer to these questions will help you determine if God is at work in the life of the person with whom you are sharing. Plus, when you ask, by the way, when you ask this question, by the way, if what you were believing is not true, would you want to know? You will most likely win permission to go to the next step to share the power of God's word. So this part is called the power of God's word. So God's pen... God's word penetrates and changes hearts toward his son. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Do you remember what you were like before you became a believer? The Bible probably had little or no meaning to you or your life. Yet somehow, when you became a Christian, the Bible seemed different. The Bible didn't change you, you changed. I mean, didn't change, you changed. You became a new creation and suddenly this book became alive with meaning about life and eternity. The Bible says, a man without spirit does not understand the, spirit, the things of the spirit. And that's in 1 Corinthians 2.14. So how in the world can you reach someone who cannot understand God's love? You can't. This is the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will move through God's word. Now, right there, the thing is, I've changed. People around my neighborhood, my family and stuff like that, they've all said to me, you know, wow, you've changed. You're more laid back. You're this, you're that. You're more happy than you've ever been. Stuff like that. Um, they will notice. They will notice that you've changed. And, you know, you will be able to see things in other people that are believers and that are not believers as well. And you know what? Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. There is going to be days where people are going to be like, you're a Christian? Yeah, I've had those days, believe me. And you know what? You got to get past them. You go, you ask for forgiveness. You pray to the Lord and say, look, God, you know what? I made a mistake. Please forgive me. And then the point is you have to forgive yourself. Okay, God's already forgiven you before you even ask. Okay, so the next part is called the scripture principles. There are two basic principles at work when you share scripture. The first comes from Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing the message. So as soon as they hear that message, some people are going to be like, wow, I never thought that way before. Or you know what? I would never have thought that, would never have thought that way. Hearing this now, it's changing my mind. The second principle comes from Luke 10, verse 26, which describes Jesus' approach to a man who was reading the law. Jesus simply asked the man, how do you read it? 
In other words, Jesus was asking, what does this say to you? So when you're reading the Bible, a good place to start, and most pastors will tell you the same thing, start in the New Testament, okay? The Old Testament is a lot of history and everything else, but a lot of the stuff in the Old Testament is followed up by stuff in the New Testament. So just that little hint. In this way, Jesus was able to discuss scripture without starting an argument. What a great example, an example you can follow when sharing scripture from the Bible. What does this say to you is a question. It's not a defense or an argument. All you have to do is listen to your friend's answer, which is hard for a lot of us because we may not like their answer, but listen to the entire answer. Don't interrupt, just listen. Your only job is to turn pages and to stay out of God's way. The Holy Spirit will help your friend understand more from a simple reading of a verse than any explanation or sermon you could have preached. So in other words, let's not puke the Bible on them. Let's let them tell us what their version is. And then even sometimes we can find other verses to back up what we're trying to say and how help them understand things better that way too. So here's a bo big boomer versus the Derringer. So before you pull out the big Bible you use your in your quiet time, the one I refer to as the big boomer, let me hold up a red flag. Before I was a believer, I had a hard time being with Christians, let alone being with their big boomers. <clears throat> Perhaps instead of pulling out what looks like a cannon in the eyes of a non-believer, you can pull out a little derringer, the kind you can hide in your pocket until you need it. So you know those little Gideon Bibles, those little pocket Bibles? Perfect thing to pull out because, like I said, best thing to do is start in the New Testament. I suggest you get a small pocket-sized Bible like Broadman and Holman's Share Jesus Without Fear Bible. It's just a thing to go with this book. And it does have a lot of hints in it too. So, which includes notes. This Bible is small enough to slip into your pocket or purse and looks like a checkbook or a day timer. So it doesn't even look like a little Bible. So when you pull it out, say, you know, I got a few things in here that might help us have our discussion. And it doesn't look about like a Bible. It's not intimidating. It's, you know, because the minute they see you pull out a Bible, they're like, oh, great. Here we go. A lot of people will do that. So, so. Your commitment. The Bible represents your commitment. When you carry it, you are saying you are living under the anticipation that God is moving, going to move in your life. Have you ever left your wallet on the dresser and left your purse in the car? You run around feeling empty and lost. That's the way it should be when you leave your sharing Bible New Testament behind. It should become such a part of you that you feel lost without it. Okay, so here's objections to the Bible. This is going to be a tough one for a lot of people to hear, but it's also going to make things a little bit easier because it did for me. You may get one of two objections when you open your Bible. Your friend may say the Bible has too many errors. This objection is answered in the simple script. There are many errors in the Bible, but don't go off on a rabbit trail. With all, the ants, with all the love you can muster, help your friend, hand your friend your Bible. Let them read it to you. Would you show me one? Show me a mistake in the Bible. So this is a conversation that you may end up having. Friend, well, I can't. I can't either. Let's turn to Romans 3.23. So that's a scripture you can use. Too many translations is another one. There's so many different versions of the Bible. I don't know which one to believe. So this is, and when someone says to me, there are too many translations of the Bible, I give them my Denver Seminary answer, an answer that cost me about 15 grand to obtain. It's a lot of money to obtain an answer, but hey, it helped him. So don't miss it. The answer to this statement is simply, yep, there are too many versions because we all agree there are too many versions. You see, the non-believer thinks he's gotcha. And when you say to him, 
Did you know you are absolutely right? There are many translations of scriptures, but did you know they all say the same things? The non-believer says, no, I didn't. And you say, let's turn to Romans 3.23. Now, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let's examine scripture for a moment. For 2,000 years, men and women have studied this book to prove it true or false. Isn't it interesting? No one ever found an error. Think about it this way. If your Heavenly Father can't write a book without pro a proven error, or, can write, or can't write a book without a proven error, you would expect him to be able to get you out of a grave. In fact, I would concede that if anyone found a genuine error in the manuscripts, my faith would have been in vain. No matter how you examine it, historically, prophetically, or archaeologically, it remains flawless. God promised that not one cross T or dotted I came by the will of man. Man did not write or create the Bible. Instead, man was inspired and carried along by the power of the Holy Spirit to write God's inerrant word. Please note that these and other objections and their responses can be found in chapter 8 as well as chapter uh as well as that. So chapter 8, we'll get to that later because we're only in chapter 5. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures and then I'm going to end this video and then we'll start with share Bible directions after in the next video. So the second step is sharing Jesus without fear is to allow the Bible to speak. God uses scriptures to change people's lives. You will provide a series of Bible verses to ask your friend to read out loud so here's the Bible verses and if you want to pause it so that you can write each one down feel free to do so I'll take my time Romans 3 23 Romans 6 23 John 3 3 John 14 6 Romans 10 verses 19 to 11 or sorry my bad Romans 10, verses 9 to 11, 2 Corinthians 5, 15, and Revelation 3, 20. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, edit the video, you make mistakes. I'm not editing it because this is me. I stutter when I get nervous and stuff like that. But I love you guys, and I'm pushing through because I care about getting this message to you. I am trying to be obedient to God and sharing his message, and this is the best way I know how to get it to the world. But guys, thank you so much for joining me. God bless. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.